Awesome. Thank you, Dave, for being uh, on the show. We really appreciate this. I'm, I'm really excited to be here <laughs> after all uh, this whole trip. Yeah. 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 Well, I stumbled across your work, um, gosh, years ago, but uh, I was really interested in the work that you've done with urine therapy. And I know that you've done some interviews on urine therapy and I'm curious, it's kind of a weird subject. Mm -hmm. Most people are averse to it. Have you been doing any urine therapy on this trip yourself? Yeah, I, I do it every day. Do I you? mean, I've been doing it every day, pretty much every day for, for the last six years. And I saw that you uh, fasted on your own urine for mm -hmm. some time. How long did you fast for? I did a 30 day urine fast. Oh um, my goodness. Which, uh, well, no, no food or water. Um, it was just urine. Um, and uh, um, I tried I tried looping everything that I produced, but um, I, I ended up, I was going like every 15 minutes. So, uh, so I had to cut back a bit, but yeah, um, but yeah it was just, just urine. So they say that as you continue to cycle the urine through your body, it you, you pee more often, right? You do, and it gets clearer and clearer. Okay. Um, it does change, it's weird because um, your body is adjusting uh, all the time, so it, it, it kind of changes its taste and, um, and uh, um, yeah, it's, it kind of varies, so uh -huh. you, you just have to, uh, you know, you, it, it doesn't follow any kind of pattern. Your body's, you know, a dynamic system, so, you know, all, all these things, uh, you know, uh, change uh, as as you as you go along, it's just very strange because I was I was actually healing stuff in that thirty days. I bet, um, I bet, and and so my body um, was was adjusting, so the urine was adjusting along with it. What do you think you were healing? Oh, I I healed my asthma, my lungs repaired themselves. Really? Um, yeah, um, I had. Um, asthma. I've had asthma since I was uh, a child, wow. um, and it was chronic. I nearly died from it once, um, and um, and literally, my lungs were the lungs of a seventy-year-old. After my fire department medical, they told me that, and they oh were going to take me off the you know breathing apparatus. So um, so yeah, uh, four days into the fast, I had this urge to run. I was doing a walk and I had this urge to run. I think you talked about that in one of your videos, didn't you? Yes. A video in a park in somewhere in London or something, right? Yeah. In, in England, yeah. So I was walking, I had this urge to run and I, I ran and I ran for half a mile. And bear in mind, you know, before that, it was like, uh, I, I, I never I, ran before. I, well, I, I'd run, I could run for about 50 yards and uh -huh. I'd have to take half an hour to you know, mm. to rest and, you know, recover from it. Yeah. But I ran for half a mile and I got to the end. I was like, I can still breathe. What's going on? How and my lungs had come back. And how long had you been fasting on urine when you did the run? This was only four days into four the fast. Days. Dude, so what, what caused you to do that? I mean, it's one thing to do, you know, a lot of people do intermittent fasting. Now, I do that every day. Um, a lot of people do one-day fast or three-day mm -hmm. fast, and they're doing green juice fasts. You know, people do that. Uh, but what made you... I mean, fasting alone is something where it's like people look at you strange, right? Mm. But to do fasting on the urine, I mean, you, you didn't, like, ease into this thing. I mean, you just it's kind of bizarre, right? Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd been doing urine therapy for a year at that point. Okay. So I was seeing the benefits. You know, I was feeling great. I had more energy and... and you know, things were starting to get better. You know, my hair started to grow back and, mm -hmm. and things. It was, uh, it was quite amazing. And um, I listened to somebody talking about um, uh, uh, the urine fast, you know, as, as something to heal yourself with. Right. Um, now, I got the impression that this person had already had done the urine fast himself, but it turns out he hadn't. Oh. And when I met him, uh, he said, uh, oh, well, well done for doing the urine fast. I mean, I, I don't know anybody who, who's done it who wasn't dying. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so um, What a crazy thing. Yeah. So you did it for 30 days and did you, so you must have drank, did you drink other liquids? Like what liquids did you drink? Well, at the beginning, I was drinking, because um, I was still in the squeamish type phase, uh, uh -huh. I was drinking um, uh, like a mouthful of uh, um, distilled water or okay. orange juice to, because when you start the fast, uh, it, your urine gets very strong okay. um, and cloudy and stuff. Right. So I was um, just kind of rinsing my mouth with, with some freshly squeezed orange juice or distilled water. Okay. Um, but that only lasted for, a, for um, you know, a week or so. And then I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't drinking anything other than urine. 
Oh my gosh, that's crazy. See, I do it every morning, but I do like a homeopathic kind of thing, like, because I'm still like, I'm st- I don't know what it is. I just don't, I'm still not scared of it, but I just, you know, I'll do like a teaspoon of it in the morning and I'll mm-hmm. mix it with water and I'll just chase it down. And, you know, and I've been doing that for a few years, but I've never thought to do a full fast. But I mean, I imagine that if your body is healing on a fast itself, mm-hmm. then if you're going to be on urine, I, I can't imagine that your body would be just the, the healing process would be multiplied like incredible. As I said, four days into the fast, I saw um, I also had nerve damage in the side of my foot and uh, pain up the back of my leg from an Achilles tendon operation. Okay. And this pain had been with me for four years. Um, and then four days into the fast, the pain was gone. And, my, and the nerve damage alongside my foot, gone. Wow. Um, unbelievable. And you had had that for years. Four years. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Um, That's so bizarre. Back problems as well. Mm-hmm. Um, they disappeared. Um, my shoulder, which was kind of grinding, uh-huh. uh, that, that sort of healed itself. Um, and I said, my hair started to grow back and, you know, all the lines on my face started to smooth over. And how long ago did you do the fast, this 30 day fast? Oh, this was back in, uh, 2012. 2012. So sometimes, so have you done one since then? Another one? Um, not a urine fast, but I did a 60 day breatharian experiment. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that too. Cause mm. you talked about that on your, your YouTube channel. If you guys are want to check out, uh, Dave's YouTube channel, it's uh, D Murphy 25. Yep. That's one. Okay. Okay, cool. And, um, your most recent videos are about urine therapy and you have some talks. Uh, so you did a breatharian fast. Well, yeah, it was an experiment because, okay. um, I'd been reading about breatharianism and uh, um, I was, com- I still am completely, um, uh, a, a complete believer that uh, the human body doesn't need food. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I decided to do a little experiment. It was supposed to be for a year. Actually. Did you say liquid or little? Sorry? Did you say liquid experiment or a little experiment? Little. This was a something. little, okay, yeah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. So yeah, it was, uh, it was supposed to be for a year. Okay. So I, I, I actually planned um, or prepared my body for a year um, previous to the experiment, um, by ramping down the amount of food I was eating okay. and the density of the food. Okay. So I was uh, kind of a vegetarian, then I became a vegan for a few months, and then fruitarian for a few months, and then liquidarian for a few months, and um, and then uh, I started the uh, the the uh, breatharian experiment. So, what year was this? Oh, this was 2014. 2014. So two years after your 30 day urine fast, Mm -hmm. um, what was the catalyst? What made you want to do this? Well, it was, it was reading Hilton Hotema's book, um, Mm -hmm. man's high consciousness. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the ideas were kind of swirling around in my head and, uh, I thought, well, you know, I really want to see if, you know, what, what happens? I've been experimenting on myself for, for years. So, uh, I, I just want to see what, what this body can do you know we, d- so, we don't know what this body can do really so how were you able to do your work were you under any mm-hmm. obligations did you have to go anywhere during either the the 30 day urine fast or this uh, breatharian experiment did you have to you know have obligations that, that you had to meet yeah well the 30 day urine fast um i was actually working you know uh, full time i was doing you know i was uh, programming and stuff okay so you're still in the, I was in still the, going, in I the was matrix a, i was going to work <laughs> and what i was doing was i had a uh an empty bottle of uh, apple juice that I'd stick on my, my oh, desk. Oh, look at you. Cup, <laughs> and I'd go to the loo. Dude, that's <laughs> genius. It up, put it down on my desk and nobody would touch it. No. Hopefully nobody touched it. Unless they came over and looked at it and smelled it. But it was, as well, far as they knew, it was just apple juice, right? Yeah, well, you know what? It doesn't smell. That's the thing. It doesn't smell, you know. For, it's like, yeah, the cleaner you are, right? Yeah, well, even even if you're dirty, it doesn't really smell, you know. You think it's going to smell like a toilet, but uh-huh. it doesn't. Yeah. Um, you have to get really close and and you'd smell you, essentially. Uh-huh. But, um, yeah, you're right. As you get cleaner, it, it becomes more like water. Um, so, yeah, stuck it on my desk. and. Uh, so I, did you have any any issues adjusting and talking about the 30-day urine uh, fast? Did you have any issues? I mean, people can't, you know, miss a meal or, you know, their blood sugar goes crazy and you start craving food and you turn into a monster, you know, a lot, most people. Uh, did you have any issues with that? No, because um, what you find is that the first three days or so, three or four days on your fast, 
um, you, you've still got the habit of eating. Uh-huh. Um, I found myself going to the fridge, you know, just... Just at, looking. Just without <laughs> thinking. I'd be at the fridge and I'd be like, oh, what am I doing here, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. But, uh, and, and yes, you do get the sort of craving feelings. But, you know what, after about three or four days, they disappear. Uh-huh. Um, and it's true, appetite comes from eating. Yeah. And as soon as you start eating again, your appetite comes back. Interesting. Did you notice any difference in your bowel movements, anything, your elimination? Yeah, well, they dropped off um, completely almost uh, at one point. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't, literally, I wasn't going to the loo. Wow. Um, now, is that, cons- I mean, t- you know, typically constipation or they would say, you're not going to the bathroom, that's not a good thing. But in this case, was, was this a good thing, do you think? It was a good thing because... Yeah. Um, and also now, and after the, these fasts, um, what I find is that, uh, you know, if I eat anything within four hours or so, it's coming out of me. Four or five hours, it's, it's coming out again. Really? Even after this, what, four years after the fast? Yeah. Um, so you almost like essentially reset your, a lot of the, your organs, maybe. This is what I'm, I'm saying about this. this it, it's putting you back to factory settings almost. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That is so fascinating. Um, I, I tell people if they want to check with themselves, if they eat a, uh, a spicy meal and uh, see how long it takes for it to come out hot, should we say? Yeah. <laughs> and usually yeah. they find it comes out in a few days. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I've heard that too. A yeah. lot of people that listen to our show, you know, they'll say the same thing. They, they, they might go to the bathroom twice a week. Yeah. You know, it's kind or, of common. Even if they're going to the bathroom kind of regularly... Yeah, what they what they're eliminating is something that uh, they ate a few days ago. You know? So transit time is big, right? Yeah, for health, mm-hmm. people can find that out too. They there's all kinds of different tests that that people can do. You know, um, swallowing these pills with cameras in them. Have you heard about that? Yeah, okay. and uh, eating beets. You know, people can find out that way. So. The thing that's fascinating to me about urine therapy and breatharianism, although I'm not drawn to breatharianism really, Mm -hmm. but I find it fascinating, um, is that with both of those ways of looking at things, um, there's always a spiritual component. I mean, if you look at any spiritual leader throughout history, they've all fasted. Mm -hmm. And so there's an interesting connection between the food we eat or don't eat and our level of awareness and our level of consciousness. There seems well, to be some kind of connection. I, I kind of disagree because yeah. uh, the the point of my um, experiments was basically to to uh, discover whether um, you do need to be spiritual. I was doing it as a normal person, mm-hmm. you know, having to do stuff every day, mm-hmm. you know, and not having to sit on a mountain top cross legged for for eight hours a day. Yeah, you know, I was just being a normal person. So. I discovered that um, you don't need to be particularly spiritual, but what happens is your awareness, your intuition, um, is is enhanced. Mm-hmm. And um, and one of the things that I, I I got as soon as I was doing this breatharian experiment, um, well, let's back up a second. One of the things that happened was that uh, I would wake up at four o'clock in the morning every morning. <coughs> And for four hours, I'd lie there and have amazing insights and, uh, and connections and, and uh, intuitions. During this fast? During the fast. During the, uh, the uh, first 10 days of the fast, because okay. I was not drinking water either. Okay, um, just your urine. No, no, no. The breatharian experiment, oh. I wasn't doing anything. Oh, you weren't eating or drinking. Right, but... Unfortunately, I'd prepared for a whole year not to eat, but I hadn't prepared not to drink. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> for the first 10 days, uh-huh. no, I was, I was taking nothing. And then 10 days into it, I got uh, dehydrated. Okay. Um, but for those first 10 days, my intuition went through the roof. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that, like, um, that you need to be spiritual to do it, but that it enhances. Right. And okay. there could be a motivation to do it because of the spiritual openness that happens as mm. a result. So that's crazy. So in the first 10, year, 10 days, you had these yes. openings and... And then when I started drinking the water, um, I noticed the, uh, this intuition started to drop off slightly. Really? So, um, and one of the things that came to me during these, this, my, my creative time was the idea that your stomach is actually a brain. Uh-huh. It's got brain cells. Uh-huh. So when you stress it with eating and digestion, it can't do its its regular work. 
Do you mean the stomach or the di- uh, digestive tract? I think it's the stomach oh. itself. The stomach is, itself is, is is a brain. It's got it's got brain cells in there, and wow. uh, and you know we it can't think because we keep putting food down there. Yeah, so that that would make sense that if you're removing these obstructions, then you're allowing the the stomach to be able to and you get your gut instinct. Well, yeah, well that's true, and the gut brain connection becomes re-solidified probably because you have this connection now that's able to communicate one to another. Mm-hmm. So now you're able to have a full body connection. And so instead of having a mental intuition of saying, ah, I don't like this or that, but now you have your gut and now it's all connected and talking to one another. So that, that makes sense. Yes. Um, because I think the focus of this society, um, which is intentional is to keep us in here Mm -hmm. in the left hand side of our brain Mm -hmm. um and that's not what where we're supposed to be Mm -hmm. as humans right yeah we're we're feeling uh intuitive creatures and we almost look for ways to turn that off don't we we look for ways to desensitize and to stay busy and distracted and to well, the be society has many, many ways to keep us uh, yeah. keep us in the left hand <laughs> side of our heads. Yeah, yeah, ma- many uh, enticing ways, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So now, in terms of your friends and family, let's just do the let's just talk about the the urine fast. Did they think you're crazy, um, or do you run in a lot of circles where they understand this? Well, uh, actually, <laughs> um, my my mother, um, I I kind of broached the subject with her and told her what I was doing and um, she said oh yeah my dad used to make us do it when I was a child I was like what <laughs> you didn't tell me that your mom's dad used to make them do it yeah wow and um, but she but his her dad never told her why they were doing it oh just so sure. as soon as they got away from him they stopped doing it yeah why would you continue yeah, yeah. so um, so she wasn't that shocked wow and uh, um, one of my sisters uh, I I, I basically convinced her to try putting it on her skin uh-huh. um, and uh, you know just to, to keep her skin smooth and she came back to me after a month and said I've had this skin complaint for the last couple of years it's been getting worse and worse and now it's gone and she was like amazed wow. and um, so she started drinking as well and then my mum was watching and seeing what was happening and she said well I'm going to give it a try as well Wow! and my mum um, well, she was, she was in a wheelchair for 10 years and um, she was riddled with, uh, with arthritis. Wow. She had high blood pressure. She had digestive problems, back problems for 50 years. Um, a whole list of things, a whole tabletop full of drugs. Oh, my and gosh. After two years on urine therapy, clear of all her drugs, um, got, she's got nothing wrong with her. She's out of a wheelchair. She looks 20 years younger. Did she change her diet at all? She changed her diet. She uh, she started urine therapy, and she was on distilled water. Yeah, that's a big one. Yep. So wow, what a what a crazy thing. So you have one sister, and you have another brothers. Well, two sisters and a brother. Two sisters and a brother. So one sister did it. What about the other sister and the, the other brother? Sister is like nah, nah. <laughs> nah I don't want to do it. My brother doesn't really uh, yeah doesn't really sort of. Uh, is, into that is your thing, brother so. at all is he into any of the same kind of stuff you're into not really no. yeah, no. yeah older he's, is he younger he's younger, younger. And he's, uh, he's, he likes it in the matrix yeah yeah it's a nice place if you want to stay there yeah so what about your dad did he do any of the these um did my, he follow any yeah of no i i haven't really uh, spoken much to my dad so okay you know, not sort of i've just got in touch with him but uh, um, over the last few years i haven't really okay. had anything much to do with so him. you're an influence on on your one of your sisters and and yeah. your mom um i mean that's pretty absolutely. awesome my, my mom's a, an advocate of it now and uh you know on the forums and stuff you know, she's she's up, she's out there saying, "Yeah, do it this, do this." She's an expert. She's helping so. people. That's awesome. And so, uh, in terms of when you do it and how much, like I said, and um, I do a little bit, like a teaspoon in the morning. I just mix it with water. I just have never had. The, I've been, but so when do you do it? Do you wake up and drink? I mean, a lot of people say to don't drink your first morning because it contains the toxins. What do you think? A lot, a lot of people who who um, don't actually know what they're talking about. A lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, the first one is the most important one. That's what I think because before I go to bed at night, I take um, some minerals, uh, liquid minerals, and things mm-hmm. like that, and um, and so I would think that like. This is this would be a way to reintroduce the excess of what you pee out back in, right? right well, is that part when of? When you're asleep, your body, while mm-hmm. you're resting, 
you know, all your glands and stuff are, are, are working overtime you know, <coughs> with this extra energy that's uh, available okay. to produce all the things that it needs. Okay, yeah. and it, the the glands and stuff are like uh, are like factories. They don't know, you know, they're not like precise. They just switch on and produce, and then when there's no more energy available, they switch off. Okay, so um, your first morning urine is like the most densely packed of all the good stuff. So even though it's most likely for most people yellow and and more mm-hmm. pungent and has a greater smell, um, it's more important to drink that. It's the best one to drink. It's, it can never harm you. It's not got toxins in it. It's not got anything bad in it. Because what happens is the, your blood goes to your liver. Your liver screens out all the toxins, all the, everything that shouldn't be in the blood, yeah? purifies it. The purified blood goes to the kidneys. Okay. And the kidneys are there to keep the blood in balance. So, you know, if you've got too much water in your blood, well, your, your blood's watery. It can't do its job. Right. So the excess water gets taken out, the excess vitamins, minerals, hormones, enzymes, all the good things in your blood. If there's too much, it's just as bad as having not enough. Okay. So all the excess gets shunted away to your bladder. And while it's in your bladder, right, your, your body realizes that sometimes it needs some of that stuff. So it will reabsorb while it... Why do you have a bladder? If it's waste, why would you have a storage facility for the waste? Right, right. right? It's there to um, store it for if you need it because you 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 need stuff on a moment to moment basis. Okay. Yeah. So um, you might have had the experience where you've been dying to go to the toilet, and then you get distracted, and an hour later you're like, oh, I don't need to go anymore, uh-huh. because while it's been sitting in your bladder, your body's reabsorbed some of it. And okay. taking the pressure off the bladder, and you don't need that. You don't have that urge to go anymore. Isn't that interesting? I mean, a lot of people say that we're we're all um, you know have practiced urine therapy in the womb. Yeah, you know, it's Absolutely. the same kind of thing, right? It We've all done your skin it. Skin and it formed your lungs. So when you wake up in the morning, do you drink one hundred percent of what you? Not one hundred percent. I if I wear out a uh, half a pint, say, uh-huh. um, I'll drink most of it and use the rest of it to wash with. Interesting. Yeah, there was a guy we talked to in Australia a couple of years ago, and he was doing a, a documentary on urine therapy. And Stephen. St- yeah, yes, Williams, uh, I think. Stephen Williams, yeah. I've, I've, Do you know him? Yeah, I was part of his documentary. Oh, awesome. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, when we talked to him, I think he was just beginning the process of creating that documentary. Do you know if it's out? Um, it's not out, but he's released parts of it. One of I've got a bit of it on, a bit of one... On your channel? On my channel, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so he was saying, man, I mean, he like, he puts it in his fridge and he ages it. And yep. So what is that doing, do you think? Well, um, you're not really supposed to put it in your fridge, but yeah. He takes baths with it? Yeah. Um, aged urine is very, very powerful on, um, on the skin. Okay. Um, so if you cut yourself, if you get, um, you know, uh, inflammation, um, burn, whatever it is, you put um, aged urine or even fresh do but age is better on it on it and it will heal without a scar wow usually in about three days that is interesting um there was a friend of mine who didn't believe me and doesn't believe me about urine yeah um, and we were at a festival and uh he was sitting um around a fire pit with some friends and i was somewhere else in the in the field Uh uh-huh and somebody knocked the fire pit over his legs and he, he got serious burns on his leg. Oh, wow. And uh, there was a nurse with him, and she slathered his leg with uh, aloe vera. But he was screaming in pain, and th- this wasn't really helping him. Yeah. So they called me, and uh, I basically <laughs> weed in a glass and started pouring it over his leg and while they were preparing a bandage for him. And... Uh, after you know, as soon as the wee hit his his uh, you know burn, fresh he burns, was like, right? Yeah, and and I said, just hold on, hold on. Mm. And <laughs> uh, within a few seconds, he was, he was like, oh, it stopped hurting. So wow. I carried on pouring on, and he said um, he was looking down at it, and he could touch it. <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, and then they got the bandage ready, and I poured the rest in you know on the bandage, and we wrapped his leg. Um, the next then, day he was walking around on it, um, you know, and that was a burn so bad that it shouldn't have been that way the next day. Have, no, absolutely not. Wow. And he, he was so impressed that he started putting his progress on, on Facebook. Really? Um, 
and, and it was going really well until somebody convinced him to use some product. I think it was called Dragon's Blood or something. And they said, yeah, I'll use this. It will make it, it will heal it up really quick. But it just made it worse and opened it up and everything. Oh, it went man. back on the urine and it, it healed up perfectly. Wow. So now, it, now he's a convert. Yeah. And uh, I think it's because he's got um, some allegedly Dave DNA in his leg. <laughs> <laughs> it's been infused into his leg. Wow. What a crazy thing. So uh, how often do you do it now? You drink most of it every day? or Every what's day, it? at least once or twice a day. So how many ounces do you think... Like what? Like how many ounces is that? Oh, that's a water no, bottle. Um, a water bottle. I think. Um, I think I, dr I drink um, a, about three quarters of a pint to a pint. Okay. A day. A day still. Yeah. And um, guys, talk about an amazing way to, to to heal the body. I mean, you know, it's interesting on our website. Uh, the most popular page on our mm -hmm. website is your a urine therapy article I wrote. Oh. Yeah, and it's amazing because it's like I wrote that article I think in 2012 or something and it's still it's every single day you look at the stats and it's the most popular and I, I just link off to some books I link mm -hmm. off to some documentaries and videos about it I describe it a little bit and how um, animals do it in nature and it's just crazy it's what a crazy thing right well I, I wrote a book about it as well mm -hmm. um, called the uh, Human Body Owners Workshop Manual. Yeah, I saw that you have, I was gonna ask you about that, I saw you have uh, some videos on your channel about that, right? Yeah. And now, is that based on your book? Um, yes, the, okay. uh, the one called the Human Body Workshop is uh, essentially just me explaining the, the uh, theory and the, the, the um, modus operandi of this, uh, this way of looking at how the body works. Oh, wow. Because once I started um, seeing what urine therapy was doing for me, it started to dawn on me how it was working and um, and, and, and what was actually going on with the body. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's so simple, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the way to heal the body is essentially get out of its way and let it do its stuff. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. 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 And, and just help it along with what it's trying to do. Mm -hmm. Because everything we do in, you know, the medical system is against what the body's trying to do. Mm -hmm. The body's trying to heal but we're giving it, not only are we just giving it food and, and things like that, but we're giving it chemicals. Chemicals. So now it's got to deal with all the chemicals. Yeah, and um, and we do the wrong thing, absolute wrong thing at the wrong time. Now, yeah. this is what's crazy about that, is that I often say on the show that like that is a catalyst to greater things because if, if what's going on is if we can heal ourselves, if we can literally heal our own selves, that changes everything. That changes everything around the world. That's, that's what I said in my book. You know, <laughs> we, can, we figure out how to heal ourselves and we end up healing the world around us. And we don't need doctors? Don't need doctors. Don't need doctors? We literally do not need doctors. Don't need, I mean, they're great for, you know, surgeries, you break your leg, but... That's, even, even that, um, you know, you... It's it doesn't it's not hard to uh, to set a splint yeah <laughs> to, yeah right all you do is immobilize it if mm -hmm. you cover if you break an arm you immobilize it you uh, you put a wee soaked rag on it mm -hmm. and uh, and keep it warm and and let it heal mm -hmm. and that's it um, the allopathic method just does not work mm -hmm. yeah it's he, dealing with symptoms does not work mm -hmm. yeah and they're trying to apply that same method of healing like a broken bone which is an acute injury they're trying to apply that model to long-term disease which is completely the opposite of how the body works because you can't heal long-term disease cancer diabetes these types of things using that acute kind of model no, it just doesn't work it's, it was actually um intentionally designed that way mm -hmm. because allopathic medicine was always about dealing with symptoms uh, and the symptoms would be um okay allopathic medicine was about healing bones and uh you know trauma you're right okay right. so um if a bus knocks you down yeah and you're and you're cut open bleeding and stuff well you deal with the symptoms which are the, the cuts and the, and the broken bones right the cause is external it's right. the bus you right. don't have to worry about the bus right <laughs> yeah but as you say they've applied that methodology 
to everything else in the human body. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Don't deal with the, the, the cause, just the symptom. And it doesn't work. So how long did you do, going back to the breatharianism, how long did you do that experiment? Uh, for 60 days. 60 days. That's crazy. There's a there's a blogger that I follow. Uh, his name is Steve Pavlina. He's kind of like a success, kind of a personal development kind of mm -hmm. blogger. And he recently did a 30-day fast on just water. And he documented every day. And he felt so good after 30 days that he went for another 10 days mm -hmm. uh, but man that's incredible so you did I would 60 have gone, I would have gone more long longer than 60 days it was the social reasons that I stopped oh really yeah um, wow. I uh, in the middle of um, my experiment I, I met somebody and uh, she she was a raw vegan and okay. she wanted to do the same experiment so I dropped back to raw veganism oh, to catch so she can kinda. catch up with me I see and then it just uh, it didn't work out so wow. uh, uh, yeah Wow, that's amazing. So you did 60 days on no food, and how long did you go with no water? Uh, the, f the first 10 days. First 10 so days, and then after it was just water. Just distilled water, yeah. Distilled water. And uh, gosh, there's so much to talk about. I, I could ask you all about, um, I think it's Andrew Lloyd Webber that does the distilled water? Uh, that's Andrew Norton Webber, Andrew Lloyd Webber. Andrew <laughs> Lloyd Webber. <laughs> <Wrote My bad. laughs> I was thinking that Andrew, I got the Webber, three names. Well, it's Andrew Norton Webber who <laughs> that's um, right. talked about uh, the 30-day the, um, urine fast. And, oh, really? Yeah, okay. And okay. I assumed that he'd done it, but he, he hadn't done it. Yeah, so. that's what you talked yeah. about before. Wow. Okay, I think we should uh, wrap this up. So if people want to get in contact with you, your website is allegedlydave.com, right? Allegedlydave.com, yeah. Okay, and uh, your YouTube channel is uh, Dave Murphy... D Murphy 25. D Murphy 25. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they can find you out more there. And do you work with people long, like over Skype or like, do you, yeah, do they want to contact um, you? How did you do that? The thing is, uh, if anybody wants to contact me, I'm at dave at allegedlydave.com. Okay. Um, and if, if anyone's suffering through with anything, just get them to, to, to contact me. Okay. And, um, and I'll, what I'll usually do is I'll get them to dis describe their symptoms, um, what they're taking, you know, a few other details and then usually I write them a plan you okay. know, a four to six month plan to follow okay wow interesting wow okay awesome Dave thanks for joining us today all the way from England you're welcome we really appreciate it